what is up guys welcome back to the channel exciting day here for the v1 channel we are starting our first video in a little mini series call it a mini professional series if you will for the microsoft flight simulator 2020 fly-by-wire mod i'm going to be your host of v1 i'm a real world airbus captain flying the airplane on a regular basis especially now that we get back into 2021 so i thought i would do my due diligence and show flight simulator some love this airplane has been drastically reformed even since it's just been released a few months ago from Flight Simulator and Azobo. So the fly-by-wire team has really transformed this airplane. I think it's it's time that I start focusing in on some of its systems and some of its implementations. I know we got a lot of newcomers here in the flight simulation community with the introduction of Flight Sim 2020. So pull up a chair. I hope you're ready to learn something. Let's get this plane off the gate. All right, so as we get to the cockpit of the aircraft, we're gonna go through a series of flow patterns that are going to help maximize your time and efficiency in getting this airplane ready to fly. We are going to be using the SimBrief integration method to help with importing of flight plans, which is now a new feature on the Fly-by-Wire fly mod A320 as well. So the first thing the flight crew is gonna do when we get to the cockpit here is we gotta establish an electrical power source to the airplane. So let's take a look at the overhead panel. The best way to navigate yourself through the Airbus is getting a vast understanding of where things are generally in the cockpit. A lot of the stuff that you're going to be doing in your Airbus flying is going to involve the overhead. I'm going to separate the overhead for you into three separate main panels and then smaller panels from there. On the left side we have what's referred to as the captain's overhead. This sets directly over the top of the captain. Then we have the central overhead and we have a first officer's overhead panel. Now each main panel is separated into systems panels. So if we look at the central overhead panel here, we can see at the top we have a fire panel, we have hydraulics, fuel, electric, air conditioning, and lights and wing and anti-ice panel down here towards the bottom. So the majority of the buttons you're going to be pressing in the fly-by-wire mod A320 are going to involve the central overhead. First thing the flight crew must do when we get to the aircraft is establish some type of electrical power. We're going to do that by turning on our battery push buttons on the central overhead here. With battery one on, we can now power the off light for battery two. Select battery two. We now have battery power to the aircraft. You'll hear some minor systems come to life. You'll also notice that the landing gear illumination lights are now lit green. That is one way to tell if you have your batteries on or not. You just take a quick look at your landing gear panel down here. All right, we have batteries on, but we do need to establish some source of primary electrical power to the airplane. We can either do that by starting the APU, the auxiliary power unit, or we can go ahead and just connect ground power. We're gonna use the ground power function right now. With ground power attached to the aircraft, we can continue to do our overhead flow. So I want you guys to get in the habit of going up the overhead via the left side first, down the center, and then back up the first officer's panel. You're going to draw a sideways S, if you will. So starting down here, we're going to go ahead and turn on the crew supply oxygen push button. What that does is it makes sure that the oxygen bottle for the flight crew is available should we need it. The ground control push button here would be something that we would turn on in real life, however, this situation is inoperative. All this does is record all voice communication in the cockpit prior to first engine start on the ground. Moving up the panel here, in the fly-by-wire mod, you'll notice that you have to align your aircraft. You cannot just power up the airplane and start programming the flight plan into the McDo. What we need to do is get the aircraft to align. So coming up here to your INS alignment, we're going to align IR1. We are then going to align IR2, and then we're going to align IR3. Noting that IR1 and IR2 are actually s split by IR3, it doesn't matter which way you turn those on really. I tend to turn on IR1, 2, and then 3. After our alignment has begun, we can continue to work down the center overhead panel. If you would like to do a series of fire tests, now is the time to accomplish those.
All right, we are not going to be starting the APU until it's a little bit closer to our push time, so we're going to go ahead and leave the fuel pumps off on the fuel panel. Moving down the overhead, we look at our electrics. We see generator one fault, generator two fault. That is a normal indication as the engines are not running and the generators are not supplying power to the aircraft. Continuing to move down the overhead here, we know that we are now in the air conditioning panel. Pack flow selection will be dependent upon how many passengers are on the airplane. A quick note about the pack flow selector. This permits the selection of pack flow, low, medium, or high, according to the number of passengers and ambient conditions on the aircraft. The way this switch works is in the low position, you will achieve 80% of the flow rate through the air conditioning system. In the normal position, you will achieve 100% flow rate. In the high position, you will achieve 120% flow rate. However, it is important to note that manual selection is irrelevant in single pack operation or with the APU bleed supplying the air conditioning system. In this case, high flow rate will automatically be selected during single bleed or APU bleed supply. If low is selected, then the pack flow rate is automatically selected up to 100% when the cooling demand cannot be satisfied. Now, I'm not sure of the in-depth modeling of the switch yet here in FS2020, but just know that typically on a typical operation, we won't select a low unless the passenger count is below 140 passengers for an A320 aircraft. Here in the center of the air conditioning panel, we have our temperature selectors most common position in real world is to have these split right here in the middle that's approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit for the entire aircraft. As we continue to move down the overhead panel here we now get to our lights. On the ground we like to keep our navigation light on. We'll go ahead and keep our strobes off, our beacon off, our wing lights off, taxi light, our landing lights, and runway turnoff lights in the off position while we're sitting at the gate. We'll explain those in a little bit further detail later. Right here we have our master APU, our auxiliary power unit master switch. We'll discuss that as we get the APU fired up in a later section of the video. Seatbelt sign and no smoking sign, we can go ahead and leave these off as the aircraft is still at the gate. There's no need to get the seatbelt sign on now. However, we can move the emergency exit signs to the arm position. That allows us to charge the emergency exit lights upon gear retraction if that switch is in the arm position. As you finish up on the first officer overhead panel here, there is nothing that we need to do at this current time. Just know that all white lights out is the condition that we are looking for on the first officer overhead panel. All right, now that we have power supplied to the aircraft, we can go ahead and brighten up our PFD and ND screens. You can accomplish this by moving these little brightness knobs here. The upper and lower ECAM can be adjusted by these two knobs here on the front pedestal. And if you're flying at night and you want to get some background lighting or integral lighting, you can select this integral light switch right here. If you also want it, there is a floodlight available should you want to use that as well. All right, now that the aircraft is lit and we have power to the airplane, we can see that the aircraft is still in an alignment phase. If I pop out my upper ECAM here, you can see IR in align with four minutes remaining. That means the IRS is not done aligning, which we set on the overhead panel. Depending on your settings, if you have a real alignment or fast alignment, this may vary. Just know that the normal map not available and red X's are normal when the aircraft does not know where its position is. All right. While we wait for the aircraft to continue aligning, we can go ahead and start doing what we call programming the box. All right, so I'm gonna jump down here to the MCDU menu. At this current state of the fly-by-wire mod A320, we are able to integrate a SimBrief navigation. So if you wish to integrate SimBrief with your A320 fly-by-wire mod, you have to make sure that you do not select an arrival airport when you're planning your flight. So for this example, we're going to depart Dallas-Fort Worth, and I'm going to go ahead and select where I want to leave on Dallas-Fort Worth. I think we were over here, C-16, set as departure, and I'm not going to select an arrival runway or arrival for the flight. I'm just going to simply hit fly at that point and load into the aircraft. It will be in a cold and dark state with nothing in the box. Now before starting your flight, it would be wise to file your SimBrief flight plan. Create an account at SimBrief.com, go to your dispatch selection, and you are now in the dispatch options. We are going to file us as AAL and we're going to use flight number how about 577. 
departing from DFW and we're going to arrive at Phoenix, Arizona. I'm going to go ahead and select no alternate for this flight. Let everything else auto populate for this selection. I'm going to go ahead and select A320 aircraft right now. If you have a NEO profile, you can select that as well. This is just a brief overview of how to integrate this into your MCDU in the Fly by Wire Mod 320 aircraft. Once you're satisfied with the options here, I'm going to go ahead and select Generate Flight Plan. I'm going to go ahead and select Yes. I would like to generate the flight plan. It's going to go through its process here. And now we are ready to pull this flight plan from SimBrief in our cockpit. So we will come back to the aircraft here. To make sure that you are set up for integration, go ahead and go to the Options menu, AOC, SimBrief, and make sure your username matches that of what you wish to use during your flying. Once that has been completed, go ahead and return back to the main options menu here. We're going to select ATSU. From there, we're going to go to the AOC menu, and we're going to do initialization. From here, I'm going to select init data request. I'm going to request my data from SimBrief. It has populated the flight now, American Airlines Flight 577, Dallas to Phoenix. After I have initialized my MCDU, I can now come to the init page of my MCDU. From the init page, this is where I'm going to load my entire flight plan from SimBrief into the airplane. Where it says init request, go ahead and press that. Uplink insert, and we've now inserted our flight plan to SimBrief. One thing to note is that SimBrief will not import your departure or arrival procedures into your MCDU, so that is something you're going to have to manually do. Before I get too carried away with this page, we're going to step back to the MCDU menu one more time. I'm going to go to the ATSU, AOC, and now we want to load the performance that we have from SimBrief. So I'm going to go to the Perf Weight and Balance selection. SimBrief calculated I needed 16,700 pounds of fuel. Go ahead and select Refuel. That will load the aircraft appropriately. Up at the right here, I can see I have two pages available. Arrow key right. We're going to load our payload. This is a payload here. Go ahead and select Load. We have now loaded the aircraft in accordance with SimBrief. We have 180 passengers on board, so we know we can be a normal flow from our overhead panel. Even though we are sitting at the gate here, once we get the APU on, it's going to be running in high flow anyway. All right, so now our initialization has been completed from SimBrief, and all we have to do now is some minor checking and verifying of our flight plan. All right, with our SimBrief flight plan fully loaded, we can now go through our MCDU, commonly referred to as the McDo, and go ahead and verify that the rest of the box is ready to go prior to departing the gate. So the acronym we like to use in real world is called DIFSRIP, D-I-F-S-S-S-R-I-P-P. Now, not all of these functions are going to be available right now for your Fly-By-Wire 320 airplane. In the future, they may, and I may have to update this video. But as of right now, the aircraft does have some significant stuff modeled. Let's go ahead and work through it. First thing we want to do is go to the data page for D, and we want to check the aircraft status. It is right here where we would make sure that we have the active nav database. You can see this is active from 3 December to 30 December. This video is releasing in 2021, so we know that this is probably out of date now. We want to check that before we do any flying online at VATSIM or whatnot. You also have your engine variant here selected as well. So moving on from the D, we're going to go to the I. I is for initialization. Because we have uplink available through SimLink, we know that, or through SimBrief, we just verify that everything did uplink properly, our tropopause, pause, our cruise flight level, cost index, and flight number. After hitting the initialization page, we now go to F for flight plan. Flight plan is where we're going to verify what we have done. So what I like to do is I like to actually come out here, do right alt, and select your MFD. From there, we're going to put it into plan mode. Putting it in plan mode allows us to verify our waypoints as we step through our flight plan. So I'm going to do plan mode, and I'm going to move the range out to about 40 nautical miles. Now we'll zoom back down here to our MCDU and step through this. According to SimBrief, our departure procedure, remember our departure does not load automatically. We have to put in our departure. We're going to expect to depart off of runway 17 right.
and the West Hex 2 departure. So we'll scroll all the way down here to West Tex 2, and we're going out to the Saikan transition. You can see before I even insert this here, I get a yellow drawing showing what I'm going to be adding to my flight plan. That looks exactly like what I want to do, so let's go ahead and press insert. We've now loaded our departure off 17 right and the RNAV departure procedure. I will continue to step through my waypoints until I get down to Phoenix here. Remember, the arrival also does not load. So according to Simbrief, we pull that up right here, we are going to be doing the ping one arrival off of the driver transition. I'm going to just go ahead and expect we're going to land on runway 26. That's always subject to change, but for loading purposes, let's go ahead and throw that in the box right now. I will select ILS runway 26, and we are looking for the ping one arrival procedure. There is ping one selected. And I'm going to press insert. So I've now loaded the ILS 26 with no approach via dr ping one with the driver transition. Now I like to go through my box here and verify that everything is indeed what I am expecting to see. I now have my arrival procedure loaded into my MCDU with my expected runway for landing. All right, so now that is the F part of our diff strip. Now the S unfortunately is not modeled yet. S refers to secondary flight plan or secondary index. This is not modeled. We would actually use the secondary flight plan to put in an emergency return back to our departure procedure. So we're going to go ahead and skip the S's in diff strip. After the S we have R for RADNAV. RADNAV we can hard tune any VORs if we wish to for our departure procedure. We can go ahead and throw in TTT which is 113.1 should we want to do that for any type of specific departure that requires a VOR or maybe a cross radial reference, this is where you would throw that in here on your RADNAV page. All right, after R, we now have I again. The second I is for init B. So we're going to our initialization page, but we're going to arrow right to the initialization B page. This is where we need to load our zero fuel weight CG and block fuel into the computer. So I'm going to just go ahead and click right here and it's going to auto-populate my zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight CG. I will insert that. For block fuel, we have to actually put what we have on board the airplane. At this point, if I look up here, I've got 1650 pounds on my airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and put 16.5. There we go. And this will do its calculation. And we have a little bit of extra gas, an hour and 10 minutes or so extra. So our initialization B has now been completed. The first P stands for progress page. The progress page is not fully functional yet. What I would like to do in the real world here is just put my departure airport right here. Unfortunately, that's not modeled yet in the simulator, so we're just going to go ahead and leave this page as it is. The second P is for performance. This is where we're going to load our V speeds and performance speeds for the aircraft's departure. As of right now, I haven't found any problems with just selecting the speeds manually from the airplane itself. So I'm going to select a V1, I'm going to select a VR, and I'm going to select V2, a 134, 135, 139. This is where you're going to select your flaps position. Most commonly, probably going to do a flaps one takeoff here. You can do flaps two if you have a performance calculator. You can put those numbers in there. THS, that refers to the trimmable horizontal stabilizer. In the narrow body plane, we don't even worry about this because it's just a, merely a reminder. And Airbus has moved from using uh, decimal point for determining your trim setting to more of a percent CG set. So airline to airline, it would be dependent, but you don't have to worry about putting anything in the THS. In the narrow body, it, does, it really does nothing other than serve as a reminder. Takeoff shift, this is if you were taking off from an intersection departure and you wanted to have more accurate performance numbers. In flight simulator, you really don't need to worry about that too much. Flex temperature for takeoff, engine out acceleration altitude, our transition altitude is something that we do care about. I'm going to go ahead and put 18,000 because that's where I'm flying today in the United States. Transition altitude is flight level 180. So that wraps up the diff strip, and you can confidently say that your airplane is now pretty much programmed 
to start getting ready to depart the gate. All right, after working in the box, now we're gonna go ahead and continue setting up the rest of the airplane in preparation for departure. One thing I like to do now is go ahead and arm our flight directors. I'm gonna go ahead and put the constraint mode on so I can see vertical constraints on my ND. And I'm also going to move this back to arc mode. Arc mode is the most common position for the Airbus when you're flying around in day-to-day -day flights A to B. Uh, there is a rose navigation available, but most of the time that's uh, not very commonly used unless you're doing a specific procedure. So I put that in arc mode. I like to zoom my range down to 10 for departure, and I like to display my VOR information here on my ND. You could see TTT is hard tuned because we did put that in the red page in the MCDU, so we're already receiving DME from that VOR. That happens to be Maverick VOR here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Other things I need to do in preparation for departure is just set my top altitude per my clearance. If you're on a network, you're probably going to top. You're going to get a top altitude. We're just going to go ahead and set uh, 200 for our initial altitude in the climb out. And the FO side, I'll put his constraints on as well. So at this point, it's fair to say that you're probably nearing your departure time. Typically within that 10 to 15 minute mark is when you're going to want to start that APU at the gate. Some countries actually have very strict requirements on how long you can operate the APU or not. So now that the, AP, now that the airplane is fueled and ready to go, we want to get our fuel tank pumps on. We also want to turn on the APU master switch. You notice when I turn on the APU master switch, my lower ECAM populates the APU page. You do not want to select start on the APU until you get the flap open message here on your lower ECAM. When you power up the APU, it goes through a self test and it verifies that the oil level is appropriate. If there is a small oil leak or something and it's a leftover uh, residual oil in the APU bay and there could be a fire hazard, you won't know that you have low oil unless you wait for the flap open message to illuminate because that signifies that the self test is complete. You can see the flap open message is now displayed, so I can press the start switch on the APU master. With the start switch on, the APU spinning up, you'll see that our EGT will slowly start to rise as the end speed begins to spool up that small engine in the back of the aircraft. All right, so as the APU continues to spool up here, as we go ahead and jump back to the overhead, you'll notice that you have two blue lights now in your APU master panel. That is normal until the APU reaches its approximately 98% rotor speed, where it can then effectively provide pneumatics and electrical power to the aircraft. Now that the light is switched over, you can see that the APU is up to speed and able to provide power to the airplane. It's important at this stage that you go ahead and disconnect the external power. If the ground crew were to remove the external power from the airplane with it still providing power to the aircraft, you risk a chance of arcing and causing harm or bodily injury to the ground personnel. So it is important that you do disconnect your ground power push button here after the APU is up to speed and providing power. Sometimes it can be confusing because you see an avail light and an on light. Just remember, if you have two greens, you're good to go. If you have one blue in the external power light and one green in the APU, that means you need to fix something there. Green means go, so green, you're good to go and disconnect the ground power. Last thing we'll do here is we'll go ahead and turn on the APU bleed so we get pneumatic pressure to the airplane and we can start running some air conditioning through the packs. Remember, with the APU bleed providing power to the aircraft pneumatic system, it does not matter where the pack flow selector is, whether it's low, normal, high, you're going to be getting high flow operation. All right, that's going to wrap up our first episode here in the Flight Sim 2020 A320 Flyby Wire Mod. Expect a couple of these videos to be releasing each week until we complete the series, kind of a light professional series, if you will, for Flight Simulator 2020. Until next time, guys, I'm V1. See ya.